So you've got your new printer, but it runs Clipper, and you've got no idea how to use it. I imagine that that's going to happen a lot this year to people who are used to Marlin. Let's do a non-technical guide on that. Non-technical-ish. This video is sponsored by Sovol. Well, I don't know about you, but I think a lot has changed in this last year. Suddenly, everything new is Clipper-based, and this has happened fast. I even ran a poll the other day, and this percent of you are now running Clipper. If you feel like a fish out of water in 2023, then... Yeah, that was a Marlin joke. You are not alone. Don't get me wrong, I think Marlin is absolutely still relevant in 2023, and I don't have an agenda here. I'm just observing the trend, and trends being what they are, Clipper is really hot right now, and manufacturers are having to figure it out under pressure. They are also having to work out how Clipper works, and I'm no exception. I've been thrown into this too. Um, I hadn't used Clipper until about a year ago. So why is Clipper suddenly the operating system to have? You, you could ask five people and you will get five different answers, but it seems like it's usually one of the following things. The web interface, Wi-Fi integration, the non-compiled configuration files, we'll get to that, the speed of printing, or just the overall feature set. Before we get fully into it though, I've had a question a few times with uh, nervous beginners asking if they can convert their new Clipper printer into Marlin if they decide they don't like it. The answer is typically yes, but the answer is also no. To be absolutely frank, the expertise that you would need to convert a Clipper printer to a Marlin printer is non-negligible. And hopefully by the end of the video you'll be more comfortable with Clipper anyway and not feel like you need to. So how bad is it then, learning Clipper? Again, it's a simple question with a pretty non-committal answer. If you buy an off-the-shelf printer like this SV07, or this FL Sun V400, or this GD X Smart, fundamentally, as long as the printer continues to work properly and doesn't break and you're happy with the default config, it's not that hard at all. On the opposite end, if you're building a Voron Zero, or say using a Big Tree Tech Manta board on an old Ender, then you're going to need a lot more knowledge to set this printer up. What kind of knowledge do you need? Actually, it's mostly Linux. But don't panic because you just bought the printer off the shelf, right? So let's take a minute to do what really needs to be done at this point in the video and demystify the parts of Clipper. The hardware and software will do it in turn. The hardware diagram ought to be on screen now if I've done the editing properly. The printer is just a bunch of motors and a hot end. If you want to know how stepper motors work and how you drive them, then Great news, I have a video or two on that. Something has to drive the parts around and make the goo come out of the nozzle, and that is a control board with dedicated chips on it that convert basic instructions into actual movements. And this is driven by the MCU. I'm doing air quotes. This would be it for the basic Marlin firmware setup, kind of. But for Clipper, it's not. You have an SBC, uh, which means single board computer, and that does all the hard work. And it's quite a bit of hard work, uh, so it has to be something like the still unobtainable Raspberry Pi, although we're being told that they are becoming obtainable now. Or more recently, it can be one of a fair few other boards. The most popular seems to be the MKS boards, or if you're doing it yourself, Big Tree Tech boards are great. Big Tree Tech aiming towards the do-it-yourself market more, with MKS being aimed at the manufacturers themselves. Although not strictly, you can use either, and manufacturers could use either. I will be doing something on the Big Tree Tech um, range um, within the next couple of videos, hopefully. So lately we've seen devices with screens and that spawned into just screens. We have the Creality pad, we have the Big Tree Tech pad, we have the FL Sun pad. I think FYSETC are doing a pad now too. They are screens with single board computers attached and they can typically talk to many clipper printers at once, often up to four and perhaps further. So what I'm saying is that this screen on the SV07 is functionally the same as the Sonic Pad, it's functionally the same as a Raspberry Pi, but just to complicate things, sometimes the MCU and the SBC are munged together. Yes, munged. That's a word, look it up. Like in this Big Tree Tech Manta, which Big Tree Tech have sent me, the CB1, which is the SBC, I know there's a lot of acronyms here, this is the Raspberry Pi-ish bit, this goes on the main board with the driver, so what you end up with is a board that does everything. A 
Aha! I knew this printer had Clipper somewhere inside it. This is the SV07, and as you know, Sovol have kindly sponsored this video. It's no secret if you watch the channel that I like Sovol printers, so it's really not a huge challenge to talk about it for the entirety of the sponsor segment. Why do I like Sovol printers? Because they're probably across the board some of the best value printers you can get right now. For example, the SV07 here is a fully featured clipper printer that comes with literally all the bells and whistles for an RRP or MSRP depending on your favourite acronym of less than $400. I'm also compelled to point you in the direction of Sovol's new line of filaments, which I've not got my hands on yet, but I hopefully will soon, and yes, it looks like there is even Sovol Blue. If you're interested in Clipper, why else would you be watching this, and you're looking for a new printer, then follow the card in the corner now, or check the description for links to Sovol's website. And thank you, Sovol, for sponsoring this extremely on-topic video. Now back to it. Okay, this next bit is about the software parts of Clipper, and it does actually get quite complicated, especially if you're not into software. So I would advise that um, if you don't want to sit through that, then feel free to skip it to the next chapter after. I'll try and put markers in. So there is firmware on the MCU board. Uh, this is very optimized, and you almost have no need to interact with this part. It's not like Marlin, where you are used to maybe storing things on the EEPROM, like leveling data. The firmware on this chip is literally just there to do very simple tasks. If you're converting a printer to Clipper, then you will typically just flash this and you will never touch it. If you bought the printer, you do even less. Everything the user interacts with pretty much happens on the SBC, which is the Pi type board, while Clipper itself on the SBC is pretty much written in Python. Um, unless you're really keen, you are very unlikely to even deal with that because the interface you will come to know will either be mainsail or fluid. Octoprint is also possible, but it's less common. I've not yet seen it on a production machine. I don't think it has been on one. Mainsail and fluid are both web interfaces, meaning you access them over Wi-Fi through a standard web browser. And nine out of 10 random people I didn't survey couldn't tell the difference between mainsail and fluid. They are surprisingly similar. And they are both powerful enough to take care of most day-to-day -day print operations. You could do almost everything in here. If your printer has a screen on it, which is not necessary because Clipper doesn't need a screen, you are likely to be interacting with Clipper screen on most very recent printers, which is another interface that uh, communicates with the same back end as um, Mainsail, uh, and it's similarly powerful and it's quite intuitive, so you should have no problems from that end. Since Wi-Fi and web integration is pretty pivotal to using Clipper, and thus mainsail or fluid is important, I want to spend some time explaining how you get to it and how it works. I'm going to just use mainsail to refer to the web interface generally to avoid getting fed up of saying mainsail or fluid all the time. Substitute it with whichever you happen to have. Now, Depending on whether you skipped the last part or not, you might know that Mainsail is a web interface that sits running on the Pi or equivalent, and you can access it through any web browser. It will be part of any Clipper installation unless the manufacturer has decided to remove it, which would be bad. Um, luckily, I don't think that's happened yet. Unless the manufacturer has uh, changed the path, um, I'm looking at you, Chidi, then you should be able to type HTTP backslash backslash and the IP address of the printer into a browser and you will be greeted with mainsail without any extra effort. That will present the mainsail interface or one like it, just like this. This is essentially your portal to Clipper, especially as a beginner. Whether the printer has a screen or not, this is probably going to be the main way of interacting with the printer. You could do everything here, including things like Z offset adjustment, homing, preheating, even running your own code um, or G code commands. As a side note, while I'm in this part, I would recommend using a static IP address for the printer so that it doesn't change IP every time you reboot the printer. Um, that can be hilarious, uh, I assure you trying to play find the printer every time you want to send a print. The easiest way to actually do this, to set a static IP, is using MAC address reservation. There's many ways to do it, but I, I recommend MAC address uh, based IP reservation. This is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Uh, you do it on your router. Um, 
just have a look around your router settings. You'll probably figure it out, but you can also Google it. I just wanted to make sure that you were aware that that's how I'm doing it anyway, and I think it's how most people do it these days. So we've got somehow this far, and we've not printed anything, which is a testament to how complicated Clipper is. So I suppose we better talk about that next. In terms of actually printing, well, you could do it the old school way on most printers and slice the model in your slicer of choice, Cura, Prusa Slicer, Simplify 3D if you if you like that kind of thing. You can put it on your memory stick or card, insert it into the printer and print it through the menus in the same way as you would on a Marlin printer, but that is boring. You can also upload it through Mainsail or Fluid and print it there, and that's boring. Although I do do that occasionally, but what you really want to do is install a plugin into your slicer. Some slicers like Orca Slicer don't even need this plugin, but in Cura you need a plugin called Moonraker API uh, plugin, and that's a lot of plugins in one sentence. I don't want to confuse you with extra stuff, but Moonraker is the name given to the API of Clipper. It's the part that talks to the um, mainsail and clipper screen and stuff, just go with it. All you have to do is set up this uh, Moonraker API plugin, put the IP address in, it's the same one as your mainsail interface is at, then once you've got that set up you can directly upload to the printer from Cura in one click, which is really convenient, and this is where you start to see the benefit of Clipper over Marlin. So. That's how you use Clipper. What about configuring it? It's likely at some point that you may have to look at, edit, or be asked for what's colloquially referred to as your printer config. When anyone talks about that term, the printer config, what they typically mean is a single file. It's called printer.cfg, and you can access it through mainsail or fluid most easily. You can also access it through other methods, but I'll try not to get bogged down in that. Depending on your level of familiarity with config files, this might be unrecognizable, but luckily most stock printers have at least most of this stuff ironed out for you. Um, not always though, because a lot of the manufacturers are rushing to get their clipper printers out before others, and so it's not entirely out of the question that you will have to edit this file. The file is divided into sections, and it might look quite different to mine, as there's plenty of optional sections, and it depends on the printer itself. Although typically it will certainly begin with definitions of the board pinouts, and what kind of drivers and steppers and stuff, and it's human readable if you're the kind of human who's able to read these things. I need to tell those of you who aren't scared off by this about macros. In fact, listen up, because uh, even if you don't want to know about macros, you'll probably need this for your slicer. Macros are or can be defined in the same printer config file that we just looked at, and there's a good chance that you will get some pre-made uh, with your printer. You can add them, but you might not even want to. The reason that it's important for you to listen to this is because typically, like on the SV07 here, you have two macros called start print and end print. And guess what? These actually matter. They contain the commands that you need to run at the beginning and end of a print, and your slicer is probably set up from Marlin printer, so you probably need to remove all the start and end code from, say, Cura or Prusa slicer, and replace it with just a call to these macros, like you can hopefully see on screen now. So, finally, what about when things go wrong? There's, unfortunately, a lot more ways things can go wrong on a clipper printer compared to a Marlin one. I can probably explain it quite simply. There's, there's more working parts. Um, more parts, more problems. So you're more likely to spend more time staring at error messages that you don't understand than you than you would on a Marlin printer. Trying to decrypt such messages is well beyond the scope of this video, but I suggest just cutting and pasting whatever Clipper throws at you into Google, and you will almost always get a good idea of what's going on. Eventually, after enough experience, some of these errors will start to become more familiar, but don't be surprised if they don't from the from the start. But what if things really go wrong? Well, this is where you might need to reflash the entire operating system on the SBC. On some printers, this is relatively easy because they run the operating system off an SD card in the same way that a Raspberry Pi would, like, for example, a Raspberry Pi or the BQ Hurricane. Um, but others have internal storage, like the MKS boards have EMMC. It is always possible to reflash Clipper. Um, this is the operating system equivalent of turning over the Etch-a-Sketch and shaking it, but how to do this is something that the manufacturer typically needs to tell you. And they should also provide a system image for you. If they don't, then 
I don't know, that would be weird. There's also an increasing number of community builds, and they are also fine. You can flash those in the same way. Well, that was a very, very quick tour of your new Clipper printer. We don't have time for quite a lot of things. I guess we are going to need more episodes to cover things like bed meshes or Z offsets, stuff like that. Let me know what you think in the comments as always, and let me know what you would like me to cover in terms of Clipper config in the future. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.